Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video on what's new in uh, Leap Bridge Steel Connect Edition version 17 update 1. First thing I will mention here, and it's a pretty major one, is that of 64-bit uh, support in Leap Bridge Steel. What does that mean to you? Well, that gives you, uh, gives you the ability to uh, have the analysis run much faster, uh, but we can also handle much more uh, complex and much larger bridges than we could before because we were limited with how much memory we could address in a 32-bit system. So with 64-bit we can take advantage of whatever memory you have on your machine. Of course more the merrier. Next up here is tub girder enhancements and we have two uh, specific ones there. Uh, just trying to bring tub girders up uh, equal to eye girders uh, in Leap Bridge Steel and first one is we've added load rating for tub girders and then the second one is automatic plate generation. Now what that will do for you is when you're initially defining the bridge uh, instead of having to put in all the plate sizes initially based on your engineering judgment uh, we can make a really good educated guess at those plate sizes based on your span arrangement and beam spacing and those sorts of things. So um, it is something you can uh, take advantage of in this latest version of, of Leap Bridge Steel. The next one there is centrifugal force effect and I'll have a slide on that and also demonstrate that live. Uh, <clears throat> we can now for your superimposed dead load give you the option on how to distribute those among the girders. By default the software would automatically uh, take those loads and divide them equally among all the girders but that's not how all agencies do it so we're going to give you a little more control on that. Um, we have some made some enhancements to the load rating reports as far as cleaned them up, made them a little easier to read, that sort of thing. We now have the ability to define a wearing surface on the structure and those loads automatically become uh, part of the loads on the structure itself and now you can also define the travel way and we'll get into more on that here in just a moment. So with the tub girder, uh, like I said, there is uh, automatic plate generation in there uh, where you can come in here and generate the plates and there's actually even a short little video here that will kind of show it. So you just come up here and tell you want to generate plates um, and you can either do it for a selected member, all the members in this group, or all the members on the structure. When you do so, it'll ask if it's okay if it resets or basically deletes what's there and, and replaces it. And when this window pops up, what it's doing is showing you uh, the initial plate sizes uh, that it recommends. And it also has some defaults in there for some maximum values uh, as well. So you can accept those or you can modify or override those. And then when you click OK, it'll go ahead and uh, generate the uh, plate definitions. Uh, for the bottom flange and the webs and the uh, top flange. Next up is our centrifugal force effect. Uh, this is done in the uh, loads menu and I'll show you how to uh, turn that on. But essentially you're going to, uh, the default is to use axle loading. Uh, but if you want to consider centrifugal forces, you'll tick on uh, and tell the software you want to use wheel loading instead. And then when you select the centrifugal force input button, that allows you to set a design speed for the trucks as well as a uh, whether or not this is applied to fatigue load cases as well. And you'll notice in the output here, it's going to generate uh, for the live load results both centrifugal forces and super elevation forces uh, for both maximum uh, positive and negative moments and shears. So we'll, we'll break those down and, and consolidate them for you. Here's an image of what the uh, superimposed dead load uh, tool looks like. We've just added a button to the top of the window here and that allows you to go in and change the distribution per girder uh, as per your state standards. And then wearing surface definition. So you define what the boundaries are of the wearing surface. Uh, you have things like left and right edge of deck. Uh, you can offset it relative to the alignment. Uh, you can offset it relative to parapets or sidewalks or other pertinences that you have uh, added to the model. Uh, and then that will, of course, show up here in the loads window. And uh, 
with the appropriate uh, values in there uh, for the loads. And then lastly here is travel way definition. And again, we'll go through uh, more of this live, but it does again let you set uh, the boundary of the travel way. Uh, you can define one or two travel ways, and then we'll position the trucks inside of those travel ways. So let's take a look at some of this in Leap Bridge Steel. Okay, first thing we'll touch on is the centrifugal force effect. So I'm going to go to the loads tool. And you'll do that down here uh, in the live load group area. So you can double click, for example, on HL93. And this is where you can turn on either axle loading or wheel loading. And if you turn on wheel loading, you can select centrifugal force input, select a design speed, and then tell the software whether to consider it uh, also for fatigue load cases. And it's simply a matter of ticking that on and, and selecting OK and OK. And now it's considered uh, for both. It, it's no longer a separate load out here. It's, it's been combined with uh, the live load tool here. Next up here is the wearing surface definition. I'll go ahead and select that. And it's been added here to the superstructure menu. So again, you can define this relative to left or right edge of deck, any parapets, sidewalks, medians that you've placed out there. Uh, that sort of thing. And then you can give us an offset. So for example, I'll say, well, one and a half feet off of the left and right edge of deck. And then I'll give it a thickness. And that will in turn compute a total weight. And then when I select OK, that will go ahead and update the load uh, loads button here and apply that load to the structure. Next up is travel way. So I'll go ahead and open the analysis tool and in lane setup is where you uh, can tell it about the one or two travel ways that you have. If you don't define any, um, it will default to the left and right edge of deck. So it'll literally move the loads from one edge of deck to the other, which is actually what it has done in previous versions. But now you have the ability to define, like I said, one or two travel ways. You can sync this with your wearing surface if you like, or uh, you can define them much like we did the wearing surface itself. So very easy to go in and define those. You will select apply, and then it will uh, take care of configuring uh, the lanes for you based on your lane layout options and your uh, minimum lane width value here. One other enhancement to mention, uh, when you go to send the structure and you want to do the substructure design and analysis, we've added quite a few more substructure loads here. So if you have enabled uh, centrifugal effects for the vehicle, uh, for either your HL93 load and or your fatigue load, those will automatically populate here and be sent to the substructure design and analysis tool. Same with pedestrian loads and temperature loads here as well. Thank you for watching this video on Leap Bridge Steel version 17 update 1 enhancements.